Hey YouTube world, welcome to Junk Bucket Garage. Today we got this piece of garbage. It's an old Dodge fart. There's some people trying to use it on a project that they're doing and I volunteered to help out because it wasn't running really good. So we're not gonna change any parts that are major. We're just gonna go through the process of a tune up, really in depth. No, just changing the plugs and stuff like that. But we're gonna try to make sure it's running good, starting good, and uh, capable of running long enough to finish the project. And then uh, we're gonna pray to all the heavens that it doesn't fall apart at the very end. So enjoy. I hope you guys learn absolutely nothing. I hope you don't learn the wrong thing that I'm about to do. We're gonna jump right into it. pretty basic stuff we're just gonna go in here and we're gonna check the timing we're gonna make sure that the points are clean and working good change the spark plugs tune the carburetor the thing that they're doing is requiring the car to drive at slow speeds and idle a lot and you know these old cars that's what they hate so I'm probably gonna change the coolant maybe try to put something that costs more than two dollars in it see if that helps keep the car cool and then the big thing that i always gripe about or have griped about in the past or maybe never have griped about just thought about a lot is this fuel line i noticed when they were using it yesterday is getting very hot and that's when the car doesn't want to run which tells me that the fuel is getting hot in the line and then it's boiling off and vapor locking and then the car doesn't want to run so we're gonna try to address that as simple as we can. I'm probably just gonna wrap it with some heat wrap. It's, it's not the best way to do it, but we're working with just the minimum to try to make the car dependable and do what it's gotta do. And then maybe later down the road, we'll do something to make it more better. <laughs> So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna pop a spark plug out of it so that I can run down to the O Park store and buy some plugs for it. I think I'm gonna change this little bitty starter wire here because it was getting a little warm on us yesterday and just uh, go through it, put my eyes and fingers on things and make sure they're working right. Get a plug out of there. Oh, I need tools. We have a pretty limited amount of time. No, oh, that was really, really rich. Mmm, that smells like teen spirit. Teen spirit. You read my mind. So we have a very limited amount of time. I see there's some high performance parts on this car. Somebody tried. Uh, but last night when we were trying to crank on it and it wasn't wanting to go, it backfired. And if you've ever worked on one of these Holly carbonators and it backfires on you, especially an older 650 model like this, that you could tell by this, this transfer tube, it's a 650. At least that's what I think. This is a Ford model. That's the Ford Kickdown right there. That's an extra $20. Uh, you definitely want to go in there and inspect or just change that power valve because backfire will damage that diaphragm, the fuel is just leaking in all the time. And that is probably why that is so burnt and black. <clears throat> A lot of times if you're curious, hey, did my power valve blow out? You could go ahead and turn these idle mixture screws all the way in close so they're not letting any fuel in and it won't change the car's uh, idle at all so uh, it's letting you know that fuel is getting through somewhere that is not where it's supposed to that's a spark plug 
Okay, so we gotta get those. Let's have a look at this. What's going on in here? Oh yeah, that's got the green stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with that. What's that? Oh, that's a cat. So we'll get we'll get that changed. That's that's looking a little used up. I think I got one of those in the <clears throat> some old parts pile. And the stuff I didn't use, Ben. This is a Mopar. I don't know how to work on these. These are too rich for my blood. Where do they stick the dipstick? Where's it at? Is that an air conditioning pump? Those don't go on these old cars. So that oil's a little low. That's got a little bit of gas in it. So that's gonna have to get changed on. You can see it's super thin. It smells like gas. And that's another indicator that tells me that power valve was bad because it's just pouring gas into the intake and that's running down through the cylinders right into the oil pan. And uh, that's what you want, right? Gas everywhere. It makes it run better. Let's dig in. What's this thing do? Oh, tell me what it don't do and that is come off with your fingers. Oh, that's got the uh, that's got the old electronical updater on it. Oh yeah, look at the fancy. I don't even know how to work on that. So that cap and rotor actually look really good. And since I already know the car was running, and it's already been updatified to electronics, I'm gonna say that's good. You can put it back together. You need me to do it for you, honey. Yes. That is flopping around in there. That's not good. <clears throat> well, I'm not an expert, but I don't think timing components are supposed to do this. Something seems off. Yeah, something don't seem right, right, like that. Now let's just pray and hope that that is something we can just tighten up. I see a screw right there, as a matter of fact. And it looks like something that somebody replaced with a wood screw. I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to get to, oh, I see right. Yeah, right, there's one. And that's, you can see that that timing spark shooter outer on the electronic ignition system is moving substantially and that's going to radically change the timing oh man look at that oh wow yeah that's gonna that's no bueno could have been a big issue yeah that's definitely an issue hopefully we can just tighten that up without pulling the distributor out if you ever run into a situation like this where the distributor is messed up and you can't get it or you get it but you're not sure, if you mark the position of all of the components, don't be scared to just pull the distributor out. Just make sure when you drop it back in, all of your marks line back up. And what I would do and will, will do if I do have to pull it out is put the cap on, mark the cap so you know its orientation, mark the body so that the cap and the body will go back together in the correct orientation and then mark somewhere on the engine or the firewall somewhere where you can point your marks to uh, to a mark on the engine or intake 
That way the orientation of the distributor is the same or close enough where you can start it to time it. And then another big one is throw, your screwdriver throw that on the down there. Before you pull it out, you want to make sure your rotor is installed and then mark where that rotor is pointing on the distributor body. When you mark the rotor, don't mark the body of the car where it's pointing. You want to mark where it's pointing at the body of the distributor because that distributor obviously turns and that's what sets your timing. So you want to be able to turn the distributor and line it back up with the mark where your rotor was pointing to get you in the ballpark to get started to time the car. That's an issue we're going to have to deal with right away. I don't, hopefully it's not too bad. Right now I want to get this little puny power cable off. It's seen better days. It got pretty hot last night. It got a pretty good ground going to the motor. That should be okay. But we need to do a change on this. This I don't like it. Get stuck? Just gonna get my arm stuck, yeah. Oh. Did you actually get your arm stuck? Oh, it was close. Got the, the let the fat guy under there tool under there, and uh, while I'm getting ready to do this stuff, I'm putting chocks on the back tires so that the car don't roll off the trailer. And then I realized how close we were to disaster before we even started because we picked this up late last night and towed it home. And those are the keys just hanging out on the deck of the trailer. You want to get your jack stands from Harbor Freight. That way you never know when they're going to kill you. It keeps things exciting. Don't look. Here, let me help you. Oh. <clears throat> Cut. <laughs> oh. Okay, it was a joke at first, but now how am I going to get it? You want me to get in there? Hold on. Oh. I like a glove. I told you I'd fit. No problem. Probably more room over here. Huh? So there's probably more room over here. Oh sure, now you tell me. A small problem we had last night. Which is this bad boy wanted to pop out of park on us. Transmission and park. This is the gear lever. That's headed toward reverse. That should park. Just give that a little push backwards. Sorry. Readjust the camera. This is probably going to have to be readjusted. Since I'm staring right at it, might as well give it a what have you. So this already has a mini starter on it. That's good stuff. This will be off of like a early 90s, I guess, years uh, Dodge Dakota pickup with the V8 in it. They made these 
permanent magnet mini starters for those and they just go right into these small block no cars and they're a pretty cheap and easy way to upgrade your starter for header clearance and things and stuff except that how in the world do I get my hand in there guys Taking my strong hand. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fun. That's not fun. I think I'm gonna have to actually drop the starter down to get to those bolts. What in the crap, Mopar? Five eight starter bolt. That's not the way Ford did it. Well, as usual. Plans A, B, 3, and F all failed almost right away. I was hoping to just do this on the trailer, but that's not going to happen. When I crawled under there to take a look at that starter cable, uh, there's a whole piece of this tubing that exhaust goes through that is literally just hanging on the header. When I touched it, I I could see the header flexing. All the brackets are broke, so that means it's welder time, which means it's got to come off the trailer, which means more work for me. Uh -oh. My butt locked it. They're on the seat. Look under your butt. Found them. They're under my butt. Just like I said. Well, it keeps getting better. I have to take it off the trailer now because that exhaust is broken. I need the welder. And when I tried to take it off the trailer, one of the front brakes is seized up solid. So I shut the door of the car so that I could work on something else. Now in the car door thing don't work. Awesome. <laughs> The door's got to come apart. Should I be making a list? Onward. Probably. Okay. What's going on? Okay. So spark plugs. Distributor. Cable. 
Anything else you've broken so that we can fix that? Power valve? Yep. And then just right tune up. Okay, so check the first thing off the list. Go ahead and shout America. America. Done. Done. What is happening? What is happening? These are both rolling just fine. Why was the car not moving? Is it the rear tire? That one was definitely spinning. I didn't check that one. Gently. What's that mean? Not break anything else. What's that word? Are you the culprit? You want to tell me that I was right? Well, I got to get that other tire off the ground first. I don't think this is a posse. Usually a limited slip, you could turn one tire without, or not limited slip, an open differential. You could turn one tire without the other tire turning. I see that it's got like an aluminum intake and some grafted on sway bars and maybe they hot rotted it and maybe they did something to the differential so that both tires are turning. Hoping they didn't just weld it with a welder because that would mean the rear end might be broke. Now, both of these wheels should spin freely. It's in the old neutralis. That one seems just fine. That means there's a problem. Locked up solid. side or left hand thread so you actually have to turn them off to on the, to the right to make them go off on to make them go off yeah forgot about that for a second i'm gonna try to get in there and loosen that adjuster if i can back it up a little bit try to take some pressure off the brakes if that doesn't give me any freedom to pull this thing off then I'm gonna go ahead and break that brake line loose and let some of the brake fluid escape maybe the mass maybe the slave cylinders bad and got stuck before I do any of that I'm gonna tap on it and just see if maybe I let that emergency brake off but something in here stuck and didn't let the brake release. Maybe we'll get lucky. Uh-oh. Okay. So a little hammer time helped out. We got movers now. tells me that something in here got stuck. And there's only one tool for fixing everything, and that's to rebuild it with brake cleaner.
brand new. That'll be $100, please. So the first thing you want to check on these drum brake systems is this doodad right here. This is the adjuster that uh, when you're you oh that pads almost gone. You know that's perfect. When you use these drum brake systems, they have to hold some pressure against the drum, or else your get your brake pedal would just go to the floor every time you touched it to compensate for the gap in between the shoes and the drum. This adjuster, every time your brake uh, shoes move outward, is supposed to have a little tension on it and it'll turn. And this little clicker here will hold it in place just like that. And it does that on its own. And it pushes these shoes out into the drum and it holds pressure against the drum. If your brakes are ever sticky or out of adjustment, go right to this adjuster and make sure it's spinning freely. These things like to get gummed up. This one seems to be working just fine, so I'm gonna leave it like it is. Normally I'd put a little grease on that, but I'm not gonna do it. The second thing you wanna look at is up here, is this slave cylinder. You just wanna check for any leaks, any obvious wetness around it or anything like that. You could pull this rubber boot back and you can see inside there it's nice and dry. So that slave cylinder is not leaking on that side. And then you check this side here, nice and dry. Everything looks good. Fortunately for us, the issue we were having, I believe, and I'm convinced is last night when I put it on the trailer, I gave it a little too much excitement when I set the e-brake and something in here was just dirty and sticky and it stuck. When I released that e-brake, it didn't let the pads go down. So, if you look right here, I actually just found the problem. So what we've got here in this drum brake setup is there's this crossbar right here. And what that does is there's an arm back here and a cable here that goes up to the emergency brake lever. When you pull the emergency brake lever, it pulls on this arm that applies this crossbar to this shoe and also this shoe with the, the tension of that lever uh, pushing this one this way and it applies the brakes. That's your emergency brake system. Unfortunately, what happened is this is the pivot point for that arm that runs all the way down here and gets pulled and applied by that, by that cable. It fell out. And when I applied the emergency brake, it applied this lever to this shoe, but it was completely out of its groove and it stuck behind that. And you could see on that shoe, there's a big wear mark where this has been happening for a while. That's been getting stuck and kind of unsticking. That might be why this is wore so bad. I don't know, but that was our culprit there's a pin that's supposed to or a clip that's supposed to hold that on that you usually push around and then you squeeze it with a pair of pliers and it locks it in place those are not reusable they're throwaway parts i look through my piles of old car parts and i about just throwing them all away because they're not reusable so we're going to try to make it work that was the issue so that sir clip didn't work it was a good try what usually goes on here, it looks like a washer kind of, and you just push it over that pin and then you squeeze it with a pair of pliers and you crimp that down and it holds that in place. Well, we don't have one of those because, and uh, so what I did is just took a washer that fits over that pin and I used some side dikes to cut a notch in it where it looks like Pac-Man and I'm gonna force that over there and then grab it with a pair of pliers and gently squeeze the ever-loving crud out of it until it works. Oh, 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 we're in business. I just gotta get that to spin a little, a little bit. Get those on there like that. Oh, and just squeeze. Oh, that's not squeezy. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. 
factory. Just like they did it at the Mopar house plant place. That's one issue down. So many more to find. this distributor pulled out when we were digging around in the motor we noticed that this was moving around in here so this is one of these little kits that companies make this is Mallory obviously and uh, it eliminates the points ignition and upgrades it to this electronic ignition which is just leaps and bounds better than points unfortunately with this one something happened and these bolts on that vacuum canister have loosened i'm hoping they didn't strip out but i can if i had more than one hand i can move that vacuum pod and move this probably 20 or 30 thousandths in both directions it's just falling back and forth so that's uh that's going to obviously change your timing and that's going to cause problems so we'll get that tightened up and then get a timing light on this when we get it started back up set the timing and then be good to go as far as the timing goes the car already ran so we already know that the ignition is working we just want to stabilize it a little bit it should be able to just tighten those screws up right there where the vacuum canister mounts to the side that vacuum advance and then stab that back in i marked where everything goes and then we're going to get into this carburetor because it backfired and i'm pretty sure it blew the power valve out put a new one of those in there and I think the backfiring happened because of the infinitely adjustable timing and then once the backfire happens and it damages that power valve you're looking at two problems instead of one and they just keep compounding we got this bowl all unbolted we're gonna pull it off the carburetor got all the gas drained out and there's your power valve that I believe is the culprit that's making this run super rich because the car backfired. And if this is blowing out, it just lets gas pour right into the motor. So we'll get that out, we'll get it replaced. Maybe I'll blow air through all of these little passages and make sure they're all working correctly. Slap this bad boy back together. These blue gaskets are considered reusable. I would only reuse them once or twice. You can see the transfer marks where you tighten that uh, plate down on them and it transfers the marks over to this when it crushes it. And then that slowly starts to become a permanent raised area. And then after a while, I just don't trust them. And they're cheap, they're easy to find. This one here, that was definitely a flawed, not working vacuum leaking thing. Carburetor's back together. We got a new power valve in there and I blew all the passages out. Distributor's back together. We tightened up that vacuum advance so that that's not flopping around, changing the timing all the time. Now we got these plug wires laying right against the exhaust manifold. This one wasn't even hooked up. 
I'm starting to run out of time. I'm not going to change on these spark plugs. I'm just going to rig something up to hold this over so that those aren't touching the header. And then I'm going to, I got the oil drained. I got a new oil filter on it. I'm just going to put some new oil in the motor. On these old motors like this, if you're not sure whether it's got a roller cam or a flat tappet cam, it's got a flat tappet cam. Just go with that. Make sure you put the zinc and all that stuff in there so they don't kill themselves. And then uh, I'm just making up a little zip tie madness right here to hold these out of the way. And zip ties are what hold my life together. Bye bye. And I did what you're supposed to do when I took the oil filter off. I just poured oil all over the header so that the car will burn down. So we're going to have to clean that up before we start it. But, but I don't think you're going to smell that oil burning over there over the camera. <laughs> I'll keep those off the headers and put this one. Oh, yeah. Nope, not touching, not touching, not touching. Sweet, totally fixed. Zip ties to the rescue. We got a new battery cable made up, a new jumper wire for the start. This has got headers on it. And we need to get around those a little bit. So I think I'm gonna put some heat shielding over this just to be safe. And we'll get that installed. We're getting a new fuel filter on now, but we need to put the that heat cover over the fuel lines before you put the filter back in down. Okay. And then we should be just about ready to start tuning it. it said we needed to put heat wrap on this before you put the filter on. Oh, Can you do this? I gotta get the starter hooked back up. I got it. Oh, I got it. I not like that either. I think we need to. Definitely, if we're over there on this header, we need some. And then we need to cut it off with the rest on this. <clears throat> and then the filter will just be on the middle there. Got that heat wrap on there and then we'll just slide that heat shrink over the end and shrink it new battery is that a new battery yeah. now oh, i mean yeah better when you're not out here in the wind. It's good enough for me. No, for sure. For sure. I don't feel like those are going to cut it. Ooh, maybe. And you only have to do this new uh, starter wire. If You only got to do that if your wife leaves the old one at the parts store for you. <laughs> You're welcome. Normally you don't got to do that. What did I just do with the heater torch cooker? Okay. That should be heat shielded around that header. New battery cable. Wrap it up. Bend it down to down. I can't remember where this came out. But if I go through the 
that's awfully close to that steering wheel. So pull it out? Yeah, I think it's going to have to come down right here. Unfortunately, I'll have to tie it before it's out of the way. Okay, that's good. And we got it. Ding a ding. Ding a ding ding. Need to hold the funnel or something to keep flopping around. Earthquake test. See, I had an eight point something in that Alaska the other day. Oh, don't pull it too much. I was holding it out a little in bit. In Alaska the other day. And uh, they, it was uh, like 10 miles out from the coast. It's the biggest one since the one in the 60s. Mm -hmm. But they were surprised it didn't even make a tsunamis. Being an eight point something. You act like this is the first time I've held a funnel. That's what she said. Uh, give me that. This thing is too It's right here. Is in that bag right there. Just put five in it. Okay. That's all I put in it just now. And we'll check it. And that under that heater hose, it might be a little cooler. I don't know. I'm trying to just going to do it. I needed to zip tie that power wire up. I thought you already did that. No, not yet. We just need to get it where it's not going to fall down into the steering. What's that? Oh, I forgot you had that. Actually, where it is right now is kind of. Perfect. Yeah. I know. I put it there. Good. Side of it. Okay, so that can't fall off the 
steering components. Where does the pizza go? Yeah, you would. Okay, right. Is everything, can you hear me? Here you go. Okay. Now we're gonna fire this bad boy up, let it warm up a little bit, set the timing, set all the adjustments on the carbonator. Should be good to go. Just make sure we fill it up with gas when we get out of town. Open the choke. You have to open it while it's cranking, scaredy cat. Kicking back really good on it. Okay. Number one up the top dead center and check the timing. Nothing should have changed. It's, it's acting like it's 180 degrees out of time. So I want to bring it up to top dead center. So you got that one out? Yes. I got the coil off. Just bump the starter. Well, it's not stick to it. Who does that? Put it in neutral. Oh, again. Oh, okay, that's pumping air. Hold it there. Ah, it feels bigger than that. That's what she said. <laughs> You can't do it. There we go. Okay. Uh. Can you give it a little turn. Ah. Okay, that's going the other way, so bring it back. Ready? Uh huh. Keep going a little bit. A little. Well, that's pointed at zero on the timing mark, and that. Piston just stopped moving, so okay. Okay, I'm, I'll lift it up and turn it around and drop it back in. Okay, drop that back in. Now, when I drop that distributor back in, I put it 180 degrees out. No head. And the weird part is, is no, it's hard to get back in. It's already done. These are easy because they don't have the, the just they don't have the cam gear stuff and all that garbage. It's just a shaft that drops in with a little like screwdriver shaped key on it. What do you mean you don't have a cam gear? Mm-hmm. Huh? That's all internal on huh. on the no cars. Yep. You want the wire on? Are you going to change all the spring brakes? Uh, make sure you're holding the brake so it don't start apart. It's going to be... And the uh, neutral safety switch on this is internal. I'm not messing with it. Okay, let's go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I gotta hook the coil wire back up. Maybe now. You wait. I'm. Good. 
Go ahead. Did you put that zinc additive in it? No. Yeah, we gotta get that in there. I thought you only done that when you broke it in. The whole time a flat tap it cam is running, it has to have zinc or it'll eat itself. Where's that? Gotta put all the good vitamins and minerals in it. All right, go and start it. Should just be able to hit the key. So now let's see how it starts. That's got to be we're so close. I mean, as soon as you hit the key, it starts. It doesn't pre-ignition. It doesn't uh, diesel when you shut it off. So I can't see the timing light mark or the timing marks because they're wedged in there and they're not marked. Um, I probably got it a little fat on the idle. Just doing very basic adjustments so the car runs and it's safe. I was conservative with the timing. I know it might need a little more advance, but I like where it is now. It just starts right up when you hit the key. It doesn't run on when you shut it off. This should be good enough to get through the project that it has to accomplish tonight. And uh, I'll be there on standby if anything breaks. we made it up here on set the car started and pulled off the trailer so I mean, that's a good thing we're way up here in these mountain areas and the old girl here did the job just right man it went forward when it needed to didn't when it didn't need to so this car is waiting right now we just did a 77 nova had a bad battery and gave it a quick look over it's got the straight six cylinder in it. It was made by Chevrolet, so it's probably fine. It'll run forever. And then this car is going to be up for its day in the sun. It's time on camera. It's 15 minutes of famine. And then uh, hopefully everything goes smooth. Well, it's the next day. The car did not do what it needed to do did a little bit of it and then it broke down again so with the six hours that we had to tinker on it we just didn't have the time to do the things we needed to do I never got to change the spark plugs there's an issue that's popping up where every time the engine is up to running temperature it just don't want to run and it's acting like it's the ignition is going wonky and it's only firing sporadically so I mean, I could test a bunch of things, but we're on such a time crunch that I'm just going to shotgun a bunch of stuff at it. 
I'm thinking that there's a good chance that there's a couple of grounds or a ground or something like that on an ignition system that are just not good. They're not in a good spot. So when the engine warms up and everything expands, it just loses contact and everything goes haywire. We're going to try that again. We're going on, I think, day three. Day three with almost no sleep at all whatsoever. We're going to get it done. We'll sleep afterward. Except that we went this morning and picked up another project car for you guys to watch. What are you guys doing to me? I was getting a crawler. Yeah, we're getting a yeah, crawl over to our SUV to drive to town. <laughs> So that's going to do it for the first video of this project. Stay tuned for the second video. We actually find the problem and it's something that I never would have thought of. Pretty simple to fix and uh, probably some pretty neat knowledge. I haven't been cranking my videos out once a week like I want to because I've been working 13 to 16 hours a day on these California wildfires. Just uh, doing my job, making some money, trying to help out, and uh, I'm going to keep these projects rolling for you guys, for the three subscribers that I have, I'm going to take care of you, I'm make sure you get a video to laugh at, so make sure you like, comment, subscribe, help a guy out, you know, <laughs> I'm just a poor guy trying to work on old cars and let you watch me be an idiot, so I'll see you next time.